My name is Andre Drenesius. I'm the chef patron of MDA Restaurant Group. Hi, chef. Hello, hello. Hello. Uh, first question. Uh, how has your journey from computer engineering to become a chef influenced your approach to cooking and restaurant management? I think my background and computer engineering gives a lot of edge for me using my logic. Yeah. Uh, in the end, my personality, I like to make people happy. I like to make people laugh. So by doing computer engineering back then, I mean, in two year 2000, nobody really uh, studying for um, culinary back then. Yeah. I think uh, Food Network wasn't even that big yet. Uh, not that many celebrity chefs. But then, I always like to cook for my friends and everything, right? So, going, going back, um, there's something that's kind of missing when I'm studying uh, computer, right? I love computer, I love to break apart computer, uh, upgrade things, you know, hardware. Back then, everybody is not using uh, Mac, like right now, everybody's using PC. Mm. Everybody mm. Uh, want, I mean, back then, OS is even upgraded every every year, yeah. right? So, hardware needs to be upgraded. Yeah. So this type of thing is, for me, is very fun. And the actual uh, programming itself, it's, it's using a lot of logic. So I think this contribute a lot for my um, uh, style of cooking. My style of cooking is progressive, but progressive needs a base foundation of the knowledge of each cuisine that I'm trying to do. Not only that, my brain always asks why mm. is things done certain way. With that understanding, then I can make things different way just yeah. by understanding the principles. Uh, if without this, you're just creating maybe what some people call fusion food, right? Mm. Just random things put together. There's mm. no, I'm not, I'm not going to say story behind it, but there's no principle behind it. Okay. You know, you're okay. just breaking rule without excuse, nothing. Yeah. Uh, some things, well, of course, we're breaking rules. You know, for example, we're in iron plate, we cook things differently. You know, we use the actual griddle, the tepan differently than a normal tap and chef would. We're doing a shallow frying and everything. But again, understanding that this tap on is a heat element. And what is a shallow frying? And creating something like as simple as a border with the pancake batter and putting an oil inside. I think for me, it shows my characteristic of the logic. Being playful, making people happy, right? Uh, I love I love to make make people laugh with my corny jokes. <laughs> so, um, and in the end, it's my uh, passion of creating to get that uh, to get there to make people happy. Tell us more into the unique characteristics of each of MDA restaurants. MDA restaurants right now at this moment we have the, this core five different concepts. We are all in the same building, so each one has to have its own. Uh, soul it has to have its own character that is different than everybody else. I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not trying to oversell this, but literally, if you were to come five different days, you will have a completely different experience. That's the goal. Yeah. Here we have Iron Plate and Wabi Sabi. Iron Plate, as I explained earlier. Um, the foundation of iron plate is, as its name, mm. tepan, iron tepan. plate. Mm. The kanji is tepan. So, we use the tepan as a media. So, just brief explanation. In the French cuisine, we are uh, using normally what is called a flat top or a French top. Mm. It looks like a stove, but the whole top part is black color because it's uh, solid steel. Yeah. On the contrary, in the Japanese culture, they use tepan, which I used to work in tepan restaurants, but I've never worked as a tepan chef. But I observe, right? Um, but it's okay to cook things directly in the tepan. It's not mm -hmm. barbaric. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of steel and 
polished steel. Mm. That's the difference. So I want to make this like break the boundary again. I'm bringing French influenced bistro. We call it this. We call this cuisine is a Franco-Asian steakhouse mm. because we want to bring the flavors of what you will see in a normal French bistro. The influence of the normal French bistro, but we cook it on a tapan. Right? Yeah. The goal is to recreate a flavor that people might be comfortable plus more, but in a setting that is different. Yeah. So I want to create a different, uh, a different approach mm. where this focus is actually on the food, on the cuisine, on yeah. the flavors, yeah. not the shows. That's iron plate. So another one that I've been doing for a long time in my life is uh, wabi sabi. This one I've been working in a Japanese restaurant for since the beginning of my career. Yeah. So this is like the culmination of what I learned from the year 2000 of working as a busboy in a Japanese restaurant. So all this uh, traditional washoku dishes and techniques uh, and when I, when I work for 12 years as a sushi chef all culminates in one uh, concept which is wabi sabi um, again it, it will, you will see a lot of playful things um, in wabi sabi concepts one of our favorite dishes is called duck duck foie so we're making a chawan mushi inside a duck duck egg with the duck egg of course yeah of course um, but the custard we infuse with a little bit of foie gras okay. again a classic dish is very close to um, people's heart right the chawan mushi but we elevate it, we, 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 we serve it in, in the nest also, you know, again, uh, just have fun. Yeah. That's what the approach is. Yeah. Uh, foundation is Japanese, flavors is Japanese, uh, but fun concepts. Yeah. yeah. We don't do gimmicks like just to put the dry ice, just to create some smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah. what do you put dry ice? Yeah, yeah. Or, you, <laughs> or, or you paint your dessert on the table. Oh man, but please don't. Yeah. <laughs> Below us, 11th floor, we have Animale and Carbon. Mm. Mm. Uh, Animale is pretty much, it's like a first experience of my journey into the culinary world. Um, when I start joining culinary school, I have my first love to an upper Thing that I didn't know it exists. It was pasta world, right? Mm -hmm. Going to the culinary school, I still remember making, according, you know, just following the instructor, making my first carbonara pasta. I still remember the first time I put that fresh pasta inside my mouth, uh, the flavor and everything. I'm like, what the hell is this? Where have you been all Magic my life? or sorcery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. where, have, where have you been? Like, what the f was he eating? Yeah, yeah. It's like cup noodles. <laughs> After the first day of class, I bought the pasta machine right away. That's how, like, amazed I was with, like, fresh pasta. That's always, like, my dream to yeah. open some, to make. I don't want to make classic pastas, but again, my progressive style. Yeah. Something out there, you know, with the respect of the classics, the, the shapes are quite classic, of course. The the way we make the actual pasta, the flour is actually from Italy. We get it from Italy also. Uh, the semolina is very different than a normal semolina. Yeah. So these things, again, progressive style uh, with the respect of the origins. That's animale. Yeah. Carbon is something, is my like it's like my alter ego, I always tell, uh, Anna uh, or Pa Toto, it's like maybe in my previous life I'm a Mexican. Uh, <laughs> being a chef in LA and in the US in general, if you don't speak Spanish, I don't know what's wrong with you. Okay. Because everybody that works in the kitchen, they're probably Hispanic or Cuban or you know, Mexican, Mexican descent, right? Yeah. So again, the flavors are, I'm not gonna say similar, but it's quite familiar to me for some reason, I don't know why. Mm. And the punchiness and everything, I was just, you know, like, I mean, okay, you can say, oh, because you're a chef, you can say that. But surprisingly, when I took my dad, my dad is the type of person who, if he didn't eat rice, 
he didn't feel like he ate. I'm sure yeah. a lot of Indonesian can relate to this mm. with yes. their parents, right? Yeah. But when I took my dad to eat Mexican food, he wasn't looking for rice. He was just content. He was happy actually. Oh. So I don't know. It's so weird, right? That's why I said what I said. Yeah. So maybe that kind of feeling. So again, I packaged what I perceived of this uh, uh, culture with the respect of ingredients. For example, so the corns we get it from Mexico because what we're gonna make tortilla with Indonesian corn. It's not possible. So this type of thing, the chilies are we importing also from uh, uh, Mexico because. Yeah. Even though I tried combining a few different chilies locally, uh, you won't you won't have that Mexican soul, the flavor, you know. But we're not make, making a traditional Mexican dishes. The flavor, yeah. on the other hand, are quite uh, authentic. Yeah, yeah. Packaging wise, very modern, very progressive. Yeah, yeah. I tried it. And we're trying to be uh, playful, of course. Yeah. Oh, last one, Bertie. H and last one. Last H and Butcher. H and Butcher. Um, as a chef, I'm a guy, you know, chef, <laughs> always meat is our friend, right? So this is, for me, it's like, I don't know, it's like my macho-ness, you know, or <laughs> it's, it's an expression. I think everybody, sh all chefs dream is, you know, to have a steakhouse one day. <laughs> but again, we didn't want to make just a steakhouse steakhouse again. Uh, we try to play around with the concept um, of having something that's already proven the, by, by throughout the year, right? We're combining an actual steakhouse, American style steakhouse, and a Japanese yakiniku. Okay. So the two and two we combine together, we dry age our, our, our cuts here. Um, back in the day, there's uh, not many people probably there's one other restaurant that was doing dry age, but they didn't highlight it as much as we do. Mm. We brought the dry aged into the customer attention. We, we dry aged various different cuts that people never heard before. I think when we did it in 2017, nobody ever heard picanha in Jakarta probably, right? Mm. Most people, I mean. Mm -hmm. So we want to focus in these off cuts. Of course, we still sell primary cuts. Yeah. But the point is to have like a steak journey instead of American experience of going to a steakhouse. Boom, you get one piece of steak, 300 gram, enjoy. That's it. That's it. That's it. We're trying to make like the Padang style mm. of a steakhouse where you try many parts of, many parts of uh, beef and build your experience inside here, right? Not it's just I'm eating steak. It's a good steak. That's it. Oh, this is from a different cow. But how the hell does this taste different than the other one? Exactly. You only put salt and pepper and olive oil, that's it. But they do taste different because different muscle, yeah. um, different moving uh, volume and everything. The more they move, the more um, um, the texture they have, the more texture actually, the more uh, flavor it has. Yeah. You know, uh, And they're all surprisingly, uh, the response is very, very positive and people are willing to explore these flavors. In the beginning, we didn't even have even, uh, we were so worried people not gonna want to eat just with salt. That's why I created this concept. Back then, no, there's no, there's no other steakhouse. I don't know, maybe, maybe some in the world, but I've, I've, I didn't see anybody mm. that was serving steak with various different types kind of flavors. Of, yeah. So the idea, because again, if this was concepted here, right? So the idea is for Indonesian back then because I was worried that Indonesian are still, I want sauce, I want sauce, yeah. you know? I want well done. Exactly, <laughs> right? So I want, I want to create something that to, you know, I know maybe they think this is not flavorful enough, so I'll add the flavor to the salt and give that illusion of adding a flavor, right? Uh. I mean, we still have sambal botol, I may say, downstairs for some people, of yeah. course, what are you gonna say, right? Yeah. Uh, but that was the beginning. Uh, and surprisingly, now a lot of people just eating their beef with salt. That's how advanced yeah. our market is right yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, people travel around the world, you know, they, they try meat all over the world. So people are getting more educated. It's, it's amazing how, how the time evolves and the market evolves, right? Yeah, yeah. And 
we can say we're probably like one of the first ones here who kind of like uh, contribute to their growth in the beginning, right? Mm. Because mostly before it was just black pepper sauce and <laughs> mushroom sauce, mushroom sauce and some demi glass probably. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's it.